So today, uh, I really have three objectives as part of the presentation. Uh, one of the first is that uh, I think it's very important that we look at the relationship that occupancy groups, uh, type of construction and fire resistance have to each other uh, because those those three uh, features are what forms the basis for m much of what is required in the IBC from a fire resistance point of view. Uh, second thing is, as as we look at that and we when we start talking about fire resistance, uh, we want to be able to make sure we understand the, the nuances of the various types of construction, uh, how those uh, fire resistances affect the ability of the, of a building to resist the impact from a fire. Uh, and, of course, uh, provide safety for the occupants. And then the third thing is we'll talk about ver the various ways the building code is structured in order to determine uh, how you would meet the fire resistance requirements. Uh, there's several alternatives in the code and how you would meet those uh, based on what the code is asking for you to, the objective it's asking you to uh, meet. Today's presentation is based on the 2018 International Building Code. It is the latest edi published edition that's available. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that if you're in some jurisdictions that are under previous editions of the IBC, uh, much of the material today has not changed significantly. Uh, so really what we'll be talking about is, is still applicable if you go back to the 2015 uh, edition, 2012 edition, and even some of the real early editions, of a lot of information hasn't, but there has been over the last uh, couple cycles uh, or a couple editions, uh, but, but but basically we'll be using the 2018, uh, but it, uh, again, I want to acknowledge that to a large extent the material being covered has not changed uh, significantly in terms of what its requirements are. So let's talk about the fact when we talk about the building code uh, and when we look at the fire safety requirements uh, specifically, there are three uh, main goals, four main goals that the building code is trying to accomplish. One of the first is that it is looking at the building and realizing as we build big in buildings taller or bigger in area, we're basically building a bigger bonfire is, is the term I typically use because we know the building has uh, combustibles, not only perhaps with the type of construction materials, but also the contents and how, how it's being used. And so the building code is trying to include those considerations as it tells you, well, we'll let you build the building so many thousand square feet or so many uh, feet in height or so many stories, we're going to take into consideration those uh, features. The other thing, and of course, of, of primary importance in the building code is life safety to the occupants. When we put people in these buildings, especially as the buildings go bigger in area or go taller, uh, we put people at risk uh, because if there, in fact, there is a fire incident in the building, uh, we want one of our prime objectives or the building code's prime objective is we want to be able to provide those people uh, means to be able to have time to uh, safely egress the building and move away from it uh, during, the, during the event. And, of course, in some of the very big, big buildings, there is also, uh, to some extent, a defend-in-place aspect that the building code considers uh, because, obviously, you can't just easily just all of a sudden leave your room, walk down the hall, and go out the door. Sometimes you have to uh, traverse multiple stories, or in some instances, uh, you have uh, persons who are incapable of, of being able to leave the building. Uh, third item is property exposure. As we build these buildings, when we're building them, uh, they pose a, a fire risk, not only to the building itself and to the occupants, but to adjacent properties. And of course, as I started when I talked about the regulating the size of the building, as the building gets bigger, it in fact can pose a bigger risk to adjacent properties. Uh, so in this way, the building code has provisions from a fire res fire safety point of view or fire resistant point of view that it wants to reduce or ri uh, uh, minimize the risk of fire spread from the building in question to any adjacent properties. And then finally, the lastly, and a, a also a, a very important feature is the fire service. Uh, the fire service, uh, if there's a fire event in a building, are the ones that we depend on to respond with their equipment and with their personnel and resources. Uh, and, of course, part of that is they'll go in and try to bring the building fire under control, uh, also make sure occupants are, are safely exiting the building. And, of course, they'll also, as they approach and come and set up for their uh, fire tactics, 
uh, they want to pay attention to any exposures to adjacent properties. But as they're doing all of these things, uh, the building code acknowledges that we've got fire service that are at risk, and so there are certain fire safety requirements that they, they are that are placed into the building code and given consideration to ensure that the fire service is given some opportunity to uh, provide that service that they're doing uh, when they when they arrive at the uh, when they arrive at the building.